G'day, it's Rowan from Elfshot Design. In this video, we're going to make this. This is the old letterbox. It works, but it's a bit wonky. I'd like something that shows a little more personality. I do like the clear window at the back though, so that's a feature that I'll retain. Sometimes I'll start with a 3D sketch, so I can move shapes around and try different ideas. In this case, it was useful for figuring out how I'd attach everything together, since it all needs to be solid in the ground. It's just a starting point though, and I'll often change my mind as things go on. One of the things I really like to do is to take old materials and turn them into new things. Down the hill here a bit, there's an old railway sleeper that's half buried in the mud. I reckon that could make a good upright for the side of the letterbox. Time to get my hands dirty. Back in the workshop, I found a length of 25 by 25 by 2 angle iron. I'll use this for the frame, and I want to run it around the outside of the letterbox for the look I'm going for. I'm chopping this up on the bandsaw, but this would be easy enough with a cheap angle grinder, especially since I'm only using square cuts. The bandsaw just helps me do things faster, so I can knock up a box like this pretty quickly. The size of the letterbox isn't an accident. I studied the Australian Post recommendations, the recommendations include everything from aperture size to the ideal height off the ground. I basically made mine a little larger than standard since we live out of town and do get the odd box shoved in our letterbox. So I'll make two of these and then start cutting up some sheet. I've recently built a new personal access door to the back of the workshop. It's now more secure and totally weatherproof. I purchased a full sheet of cold rolled 0.75 black sheet, knowing it'll have enough left over from the door to build the letterbox. This stuff's pretty wobbly, so you have to be really careful handling it or you'll end up with creases and dents. I only have a small plasma cutter, but it eats through this stuff easily. Nailed the landing. The only place I'm welding the plate on the outside is on the top. That's so the water doesn't pool in there and leak into the letterbox. Thank you. 
Then I'll clean it off with terps and paint a cold gale on the inside. This does two things, it protects the inside from rust and offers a lighter interior which will make it easier to look in the back and see if there's any mail. Found a couple of old hinges in a parts box. I've just cut the tops off them, weld them inside this outer frame. Then I'm going to use this rod to make an inner frame that'll form part of the door. shaping some 5mm flat bar to use as bands which will wrap around the railway sleepers to hold them together. Hand forged elements, even really simple shapes, transform a fabricated item into something that feels more unique and customised. Then I shape a custom latch for the rear door of a letterbox which is really just a bit of experimentation and figuring it out as I go. I'm using the roller to form out a curved radius which the letterbox roof will weld onto. The roof overhangs the front and the back for a bit of weather protection. Someone mentioned to me the other day that there probably are quite a few people out there who hesitate to subscribe to a YouTube channel. And I totally understand that. I guess some um, from my perspective, having subscribers shows that there's interest out there. I've got no intention of hassling people or trying to sell anything. I just do it because I enjoy doing it. Um, if you subscribe to the channel, it shows me that there's people out there who are interested. And of course, if I put out any more videos, then you get a notification if you hit the little notification bell. Um, and look, I only put out videos probably once every couple of months. I'm pretty busy. So if you're interested and you want to support the channel, Please do subscribe. Now a weather test to ensure any water can find its way out the back in case it somehow becomes flooded. While I was at it, I glued in a magnet to help hold the door in nice and flush, since the latch didn't quite pull it in as tight as I'd hoped. For the footing, I did two concrete pours, 
First one around a timber frame to get the levels right. After cutting this frame out, I did a second pour to give everything more weight. The second pour isn't shown in the video. It's funny, when I do things like cooking, I'm pretty accurate at measuring ingredients, but with concrete, I've always just gone by feel so I can choose how wet or how large the mix is. So I learned a valuable lesson this afternoon. Before I took the welder and my generator down to the letterbox to weld the letterbox onto the pole that's concreted into the ground, I thought I'd do a test and I learned that my generator does not have enough power to power the arc welder. So I'm going to have to either find a more powerful generator or secure the letterbox to the pole in a different way. I decided to weld on a piece of flat bar that joins both the bands. This is nice and strong and I can bolt the letterbox structure to the post. It actually turned out better than welding and I can remove the letterbox if I ever need to. I added a padlock to the top bolt just to deter anyone from stealing the letterbox. One thing's for sure, if anyone drives into it, there's going to be some bumper damage. While I really appreciate you guys who've already subscribed, it's been a slow burn for the channel so I'll probably only make a video every couple of months and see how it's going towards the end of 2021. If the numbers grow, I'll create more videos. I also have a web page for all my projects, the link below. So check it out for more photos and details. Hello, focus on me, focus on me, blah, focus on me.